Welcome back to the second video in a series about how to program with Citus Link Pro. This tutorial is all about the basics of networking. I'm Marc Lapierre, your nerd advisor. This tutorial series is sponsored by Aperture, so I'll be using their software and fixtures, but all thoughts and opinions are my own. Important. Download the resource files in the description if you didn't from the last video. For this video tutorial, you'll need Citus Link Pro 2.0 installed on your iPad and authorized for at least one universe. Make sure you have the completed patch file from the last video and make sure you labeled everything. You'll need a computer that will run the free capture viz file you got in the download materials. Then of course you'll need to connect the computer and the iPad. I assume most of you will be using the wireless router in your house or workplace. I use hardline network whenever I can, so you can as well. Let's get started in Citus Link Pro 2.0 and I'll explain as we go. Now, normally I wouldn't bother covering networking so early, but that's the nature of iPad-based lighting control. You must network. Networking can feel really intimidating, maybe because so much of networking is handled for us by devices. So let's sign my iPad onto my Citus One. The way this works is Citus One has a Wi-Fi network built in, so we start by joining that. Looking at the bottom of the device, we see the network name and the password. With Citus One powered on, go to your iPad, then go to Settings, Wi-Fi. When I see the network for Citus One appear, I touch it and I'm asked for the password, just like everything. Again, that info is on the bottom of the unit, so fill that in and we're linked. But what happened to make it work? See the circle with the eye in it? Let's touch that. This is our glimpse behind the curtain. There's a bunch of info, but if we scroll down a bit to the section that says IPv address, we see configure IP, and it's currently set to automatic. That means that a protocol called DHCP has set both the IP address and the subnet mask, which you can see below. We'll talk more about DHCP in a bit, but let's talk about the IP address and the subnet first. We want to think of an IP address as a unique name. Nothing can have the same IP address or things go very badly. It's a simple idea. Now let's look at the IP address with the subnet mask because of how they relate. 192.168.001.100 255.255.255.000. The first key to understanding what this means is to notice that the subnet, the bottom row, only has two values, 255 or 000. When you see a 255, I want you to think locked. You must keep those numbers the same. When you see 000, I want you to think unique. You must choose unique numbers in that area. So, if you want to network something to this iPad, and very importantly, with this specific subnet mask, you need to match the 192.168.001 every time, and then have almost any unique number after that. Why almost? Well, because the top value of any of these numbers between periods, now each of the three digits is called an octet, can only go as high as 255. To review, the three-digit number groups are called octets, and octets cannot exceed a value of 255. No higher number exists in networking. If you already know DMX, it's just like that. All values are from 0 to 255. Now, subnets being either locked or unique numbers is kind of like trying to communicate with your gaffer by radio on set. Octet 1, you need to be on the same film, so that's the 192. Octet 2, you need to be on main unit, that's like the 168. Octet 3, you need to be on the electrics channel. That's the 001. Now the last octet, no one should have the same number or name. With people, we have different voices and personalities that help us know who is who. Computers don't have either, so this number must be unique. That's the 100. If you want to communicate with Citus, everything needs to start with 192.168.001, and then it must end with a unique number between 1 and 255. 
So you could do 192.168.001.007 or 192.168.001.042 or any three-digit value in this final octet. With DHCP on, you'll never have to set an IP address, but you should understand a couple of things. Number one, very important, only one DHCP server should be on your network at a time. How could you have more than one? Well, you have a CITUS 4, and you decide you need longer Wi-Fi range, so you add a wireless router. If you don't turn off DHCP in the CITUS 4 or the router, they could both be handing out IP addresses, and if one of those numbers gets sent out to two different devices, bad things will happen. Not right away, but eventually your network will slow and then stop. Number two, all of your devices must be set to get their IP address from DHCP. Now, most devices, the factory default is set to do this, but gear from a rental house is anybody's guess. Double check your devices and don't just assume that they will work. We've talked about the network, so now let's talk about the two main ways that DMX gets sent over a network, streaming ACN and ARTNET. Both are theoretically capable of running thousands and thousands of universes, but both have strengths and weaknesses. I'm going to highlight just a few. Streaming ACN will communicate with nodes outside of its IP range. This is because each universe of streaming ACN has its own custom IP. Very network efficient. You can run more universes on a network than on ArtNet. It requires multicast supporting network switches to function best. So if you are in a setup and you find your data drops after one to two minutes of working, you are probably having a multicast problem. ArtNet requires strict IP and subnet schemes to function. The rules I taught you above, everything must be perfect offers the ability to use RDM, which is Remote Device Management, over Ethernet to reconfigure lights you can't easily reach. The universes start at zero instead of one. This can be super annoying. In a small network, there's almost no reason to choose one over another. But sometimes switching from one to another may solve certain issues that come up. We'll get to that a little bit later. If you want or need to connect your iPad to your computer by Ethernet and you plug directly into your router, DHCP does its job and hands it an IP and subnet. If you are plugging straight from one to the other, then you need to configure your IP and subnet manually since DHCP isn't there to help you. So let's go through those steps together. Plug your network adapters into your iPad and your computer if it needs one. I'll do the iPad first, then I'll do the Mac, and then Windows. Go to Settings, Ethernet. Your interface will show up. Touch the right pointing arrow on the right. Where it says Configure IP, touch Automatic. In this new window, choose Manual. Now you need to type your IP and subnet. By and large, you can use any IP numbering you want, but for simplicity, let's go with 192.168.001.100 with a subnet of 255.255.255.0. Touch Save. If your computer is a Mac, go to the Wi-Fi icon at the top right, choose Wi-Fi settings, click on Network. Your adapter will show up there. Click on it, click on Details, click on TCP IP, select Manual from the pull-down, fill in your IP and subnet. In this case, let's go with 192.168.001.101 and a subnet of 255.255.255.0. Click OK. You should see a green light next to your adapter. In Windows, hit the Windows button. Start typing Network Connections, View Network Connections. Press Enter when that comes up. This is our adapter, so we're going to right-click on it. Go to Properties. We're going to go down here to Internet Protocol version number 4, and then we're going to again hit Properties. And now we're going to choose use the following IP address. Type 
And when we tab, uh, notice that it does automatically 255.255.255.0, which is correct. Click OK. Let's get into your capture file and get it talking to Citus. I'll do Mac first, then Windows, so everyone gets what they need. On Mac, double-click the icon to get started. The system will ask you if Capture has permission to access the local networks. You must say yes. You must allow. On Windows, double-click your icon to get started, and it's going to basically ask the same question, but in one of two ways. It's either going to ask, does, it ha uh, does this application have access to both the WAN, which is the worldwide, and the LAN, which is the local? So you want to make sure the capture has access to both. In this case, it's a simplified question, and just say, allow. Assuming you are on a Wi-Fi network, your next move is to fire up Citus Link Pro. By default, Citus will output streaming ACN. Select a light, bring up the slider. If it works, keep checking the rest of your lights. You're probably good to go. But if you don't get it to respond, well, I'll get into a little bit of troubleshooting. Now, the first step is the classic, close and reopen capture. IP addresses are recognized at startup, so this is a common fix. If that doesn't solve the issue, there are a couple of things we can explore. I find Capture can be fussy about locking on to streaming ACN. So let's switch to Artnet. In Citus, tuck the cog in the upper right hand corner. Go to Universe Protocol. Now you're going to see some wackiness happen on my, uh, on my Capture file when I do this, when I switch to Broadcast Artnet. So the wackiness is due to, let's back up, and we're going to go to Universe Settings. All right, so Artnet, you may should remember, hopefully, um, defaults so that the first universe is set to zero, not one. So go down the line and reset all of your universe numbers one lower, and now back out. So you should be outputting Artnet at this point. Now try your control again. If it doesn't work, give Capture one more close and restart, and that should do it. Yep. We covered a lot of territory here. We learned how a subnet locks a value in an IP address or leaves it unlocked, unique. We learned about DHCP, which assigns subnets and IP addresses. We also learned about manually setting IPs and subnets. We talked about the working differences between streaming ACN and Artnet and why you might choose one over another. I encourage you to practice these principles over and over again. Most people learn about networking very gradually, and it takes time and repetition to get any good at it. But it's vital, since our lighting controllers are all built around networking now. In the next video, we'll explore how to control lights in Citus Link Pro, how the interface is laid out, where it puts controls, and the many ways you can and cannot select things. Selection is a big deal, y'all. I will see you then.